Okay, let's give you guys some more practice. So find the limit of this sequence as n tends towards infinity. And x could be anything. Okay, so press pause and, um, and have a go. Okay, so, uh, so we are trying to seek the limit of this. So let's just say, um, let's just say capital L is this whole thing here. So we are trying to find capital L. So we are trying to find, to find capital L here. So now, for, uh, now from here, natural log both sides. So that would then give you this. This would come down. That's your n, natural log, natural log, the bubble here, the bubble here. And then, uh, and then now, um, now, now, now test it. So, so, uh, so here you've got one block multiplying another block. As n, as n tends towards infinity, as n tends towards infinity, this would be heading towards infinity. As n tends towards infinity, as n tends towards infinity, this thing here would be zero. So you've got one plus zero. So this whole thing here would be one. So if you look at the natural log graph, natural log of one is zero. So this whole block here will be, will be zero. So here you've got, you've got infinity versus zero. This is an indeterminate form. And what, when you, when, um, when, when you have an indeterminate form, you, you, um, remember when you have a product, uh, here you've got one thing multiplying another thing. And, and whenever you have a product, A over B, this, this has always been our trick. We've always used this trick when we, when we try and evaluate the limits. We would write this as B over 1 over A. This is a trick that we've always used in the past. So when, whenever you have a product here, a product, one thing multiplying another thing, rewrite it as, so this block here, rewrite it as this. You've got this block, and then visualize this block as 1 over N. So, so rewrite this as this. Uh, th th this has always been our trick. We've always used this trick in the past. So, uh, so now check it again. As n tends towards infinity, this thing here is going to be 1. So natural log of 1 would be 0. So here you've got 0 over. As n tends towards infinity, this thing here is going to be 0. So here you've got 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form, which means you can apply L'Hopital's rule, meaning you differentiate the top. That will then give you that will then give you this, and then you differentiate the bottom. That will then give you this. So, uh, so now let me explain. Uh, let me differentiate this for you. So, so our next task is to try and differentiate this. So we are now going to try and differentiate this. So hang on, uh, bear with me. So now we are going to try and differentiate this. So re uh, reimagine this bubble as um, n over n uh, plus plus this thing here uh, x over n. Uh, merge these two together, that would then give you this, blah, blah, blah. So, so imagine this thing here as this thing here. So, uh, so imagine this as being like me asking you to differentiate, to differentiate the bubble. When you differentiate the bubble, you would do 1 over the bubble, and then times the derivative of the bubble itself. Times the derivative of the bubble itself. So when you come to differentiate this, it would be 1 over the bubble times the derivative of the bubble itself. So you've got to differentiate this bubble here. But rather than, when you come to differentiate this, in your mind, look at this. Because these two bubbles are the same. So when you come to differentiate this, uh, with respect to n, um, this would be, uh, this would be, uh, this would be zero. And then this here, uh, differentiate this with respect to n. So, so imagine us like this. And then, uh, and then the minus one comes down here. That will then give you this minus. Um, x is a constant. Then the, then the power gets minus by 1, it's like this, blah, 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 that will then give you this bit here. So uh, so when you when you differentiate this, it will then give you this thing here, tidy it up, and then it will then give you this. Now let me jump back to, uh, so basically when you differentiate this, it will give you this. So basically, so basically when you differentiate this, when you differentiate this, it will give you this. So now tidy this up, so here you've got one fraction divided by another. So, uh, so, uh, so, so visualize as this fraction multiply with the, uh, with the reciprocal of this, which will be this. So now it's just a matter of us tidying this up. So top times top, bottom times bottom, two negatives cancel each other out, blah, blah. That will then give you this. So now it's a matter of us evaluating the limit of this. So, uh, so this is a trick we would use. Here you've got one bubble divided by another. Divide top and bottom by, by n. 
Remember, it is the end that's moving about. X is a constant. Um, so, so, so this divided by n, that's this bit here, and then this bubble divided by n, well, you, you can imagine us being like this. So that would then give us these two here. And then as, as n tends towards infinity, well, this one will cancel each other out, giving you x. As, as uh, n tends towards infinity, this would be 1. Um, remember, x is a constant. Um, as n tends towards infinity, this will be 0. So the, the whole thing here will be x. So as, so the limit is, uh, is, uh, the limit is x. Uh, and then earlier, remember, right from the start, I said, um, let, uh, sorry, right from the start, we, on the left hand side, it was natural log of L. But it is the L that we're seeking. It is the limits that we're seeking. So, uh, so to get rid of, well, from here, you would exponentiate both sides. So that would then give you this. And then, uh, these two, in a way, they cancel each other out giving you this. So the, so our limit is actually e to the power of x. x could be any anything. Okay, so hang on. So what that means is uh, the limit of this sequence, so x could be anything. x could be anything. So the limit of this sequence as n tends towards infinity is actually e to the power of x. Okay.